Much like aging human bodies, electronics often carry mm, lingering metaphorical injuries and quirks throughout their life. Today we're going to repair an AM FM radio telephone model 74722 circa 1980. It works okay except for the handset's hang up button sticks, the speaker is blown out, and the radio doesn't turn off unless it's unplugged. Behind the plastic window is a pair of hidden Phillips screws. We simply want to get a better angle to clean that mechanical button, so undo the two PCB screws. Thinking we could get lucky, I started off by just spraying compressed air, but that didn't correct the button. Using some CRC Electronics Contact Cleaner, and an extension straw will spray the offending mechanism. Now don't freak out, while the surface is wet the button will actually stick more, but like a good solvent, it quickly evaporates. This particular contact cleaner contains no lubricants, so we'll follow it up with some silicone spray. Alternatively, you could use a 5% deoxit which contains both the cleaner and the lubricant. Using a Q-tip and some compressed air will gently dry off the contact. And it looks like the tactile response of the button is back to normal. As long as we have it apart, let's brush the PCB with 91% isopropyl alcohol. Now turning our attention to the main unit, we'll remove 8 Phillips screws after removing the curly cord. The three lateral buttons are simply friction fitted. Because the top grill is open, the interior is full of dust and dead skin, so we'll tidy things up with a dry toothbrush and some compressed air. Upon closer inspection of the mainboard, I noticed some green corrosion, which is either water damage or leaked capacitor electrolytic fluid. Let's clean this up with some isopropyl alcohol. Now it's important to find out if this is coming from a blown capacitor, so we'll test the nearby ones on the PCB solder side using an ESR meter. These ESR meters are actually really nice. They don't require you to desolder the capacitor in order to test it. 16 volt, 1000 microfarad. If the tested value is less than the ESR value for the given voltage and capacitance, then the capacitor is still good. Actually, that's still good. 10 volt, 1000 microfarad should be less than. 0.12 and it is. 6 volt, 1000. And that one's looking pretty darn good. Okay. With all the caps checking out, my guess is that moisture got in via the open speaker grill. 
And speaking of speakers, let's order up a replacement. This is a 4 ohm with a 22 millimeter depth and diameter circular magnet. 22, 22.5. Now the outer comb's diameter is 50 millimeters, but it appears that this one is not the original as it's smaller than the grill. While we wait for the speaker to arrive, we'll clean up the exterior for a professional presentation before returning it to service. Now before we disconnect this, I wanted to show you how this old speaker sounds. Okay at low volume, but over modulates at the higher volumes. Let's desolder out the terminals. And actually, if you look carefully at the old one, the paper cone is torn or blown out. We can reflow the solder on the wire side. I like to paint the speaker terminals with a little bit of flux paste before adding the solder. And then simply heat the speaker terminals to form a reliable solder joint. The initial test sounds excellent, so we'll reassemble. Strangely, upon reassembly, after cleaning up the board, I tested out the radio and now all the buttons work again, including the radio off button. Perhaps it was a dirty contact. One forever sticks with me. You, you gotta remember that one, right? Oh, I do. Fantastic! It sounds better than 1982. Actually, I couldn't find any manufacturing date signatures, so if you happen to know when this device was made, please drop me a comment below. Thank you to all my subscribers out there, and I look forward to seeing you next time.